What's up and welcome back to another video. Today we will be discussing the top 5 best areas to farm inside of Borderlands 2. Before I hop into the list I just want to say there are a lot of different side bosses in the game and 90% of them are locked behind missions. The reason I'm throwing this out there is that a lot of these areas will have different mini bosses and such that I'm going to be talking about in today's video. If you guys are curious about any of the missions that you're going to need to fight these side bosses don't worry I will be talking about all of them in today's video as well as optimal methods and routes to farm each item my reasoning for each area being on the list we're going to throw in some honorable mentions before we hop into the number one spot and simply i'm going to run down why these are the best areas that you need to be farming inside of the game why waste any more of your time let's hop into the video coming in at our number five spot we have an area that you will encounter super early in the game you should get there within about an hour and a half of play time even in normal mode this area is Frostburn Canyon. It won't take you too long to get to Frostburn Canyon. After you hit Sanctuary, you will get a mission known as Plan B. It's a story mission. You'll have to complete it if you want to progress. Not only can you get to this area within about an hour and a half of playtime, it's part of the main game, so no matter what, even if you don't have any DLCs, you will still be able to farm the Frostburn Canyon. Now, granted, you will have to do some missions to unlock some of the better farms in the area, but let's go ahead and talk about the first legendaries that you might encounter. Even during your first run through the area, no matter what playthrough, whether it's normal, true vault hunter mode or ultimate vault hunter mode while doing the story mission hunting the firehawk you will see many different ammo crates and dumpsters throughout the frostburn canyon well mainly these ammo crates there are a couple different dumpsters and i just wanted to mention them because you can also get loot midgets out of those as well and it wouldn't hurt to open the lockers either i can't remember if you can get loot midgets out of lockers in this area but it wouldn't hurt to open them plus you can always get a world drop legendary out of a locker i've never seen that but it's definitely one of my bucket list items but yeah i got several loot midgets while farming this area just for the footage in today's video i didn't end up getting any legendaries which sometimes that's the luck of the draw i got a couple different bone of the ancients but i'm dead serious when i say you can get a legendary at any time running through that area from loot midgets tubbies obviously you got the tubby spider ants man these dudes are a class not only do they have a super high chance to drop legendaries, not really so much in normal and true vault hunter mode, but when it comes to UVHM, you pretty much are guaranteed a legendary. Sometimes you'll even get a legendary and a pearl. I've even had a couple different cases where I've got uh, the cracked sash as well as a legendary and a pearl, which that's pretty much a triple drop if you didn't know, or if you get a tubby skin. Along with that, that's pretty much a triple drop as well. These guys are basically just fat loot pinatas, man. It's honestly crazy. So keep your eyes peeled while going through the area. There are many different spots where these spider ants will spawn, and pretty much every single spot can produce you a tubby. When I say that, I don't mean every single run you're going to get a tubby. Obviously, they're not a guaranteed spawn, but you can get them pretty much anywhere where spider ants can spawn inside of Frostburn Canyon. I've seen as many as three in one run. The Lisco. This is a blue SMG manufactured by Doll. That is honestly way too damn good. The Lisco is a monster, and if you didn't know about it, well, first of all, where have you been? Second of all, you might be new to the game, so just watch the footage and repeat it in your game. Follow my footsteps. Go find your Lisco. You guys shouldn't have much trouble finding it. The gun shreds anything, and I can't recommend it enough. But after the completion of the Hunting the Firehawk, you will get a side mission known as the Cult Following. But if you complete all of the missions in the cult following side quest line, you will be able to farm an additional two legendaries. After you complete the very first part of the cult following side quest line, which is a super easy quest, you just gotta go burn a couple dudes with a fire weapon. Take their ashes, bring them back to Incinerator Clayton, and you're good. That kind of sounds satanic, but if you've played the game, you know what I'm talking about. Then you're ready to farm yourself a Hellfire. If you didn't know, the Hellfire is a designated drop from an ultimate badass spider ant known as Scorch. The Hellfire is easily one of the best legendary SMGs in the game, and if you're a big SMG user, this would be one of the first guns I'd recommend to you. But let's talk about the other legendary you can get if you complete all of the cult following side quests. There are a total of four side quests that you will need to complete, but after you get to the final one, you will actually take on Incinerator Clayton himself, and he will have a chance to drop you the Pyrophobia. While this legendary launcher, manufactured by Malawan, doesn't hold up too well in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, I would still say it's a decent enough launcher for the first two playthroughs, and I'm sure there are ways you can maybe make it work on UVHM. Don't quote me on that, it's always been kind of garbage in UVHM for me. I should also mention after turning in the final cult following side quest, you will get a legendary shield guaranteed as a mission reward. This shield is the Flame of the Firehawk. If you didn't know, it's easily one of the best legendary shields in the game, the next legendary that you will have a chance to get is also locked behind a unique quest line, and I believe this quest line is another four parts as well. You will be able to fight another unique mini boss 
known as Spyco. He's yet another badass spider ant that you will have to take on right behind the lair where you fight Scorch. This guy has a chance to drop you the Neogenator. While I used to kill Scorch and then go run in the back to kill this dude after, if you follow my footsteps on the video, if you guys are really wanting a Neogenator, this is the best way to do it. Even though the Neogenator isn't one of the most profound shields in the game, I still think it's pretty decent. There's a lot better, but I mean, at the end of the day, there's a lot worse too. And I haven't even mentioned the chest loot. There are many different red chests and gray chests for that matter scattered all throughout this map. I got tons of different guns, items, grenade mods, class mods, just because of how many chests there are in Frostburn Canyon. And if you're curious about the red chest locked behind the electric field, I will show you how to turn that off as well. I was actually able to get a pearl from that exact chest. And we're only on number five. If I haven't convinced you Frostburn's good, then I don't know what else to do, man. Coming in at our number four spot, we have an area that is locked behind the Torg's Campaign of Carnage DLC. It is Pete's Bar. Now, if you are not aware, this is the location where you can find the single greatest Torg token farm. If you don't know how to do that, I will link it at the top of the description. All you have to do is kill several different ultimate badasses, and then you will turn in the barroom brawl. Rinse and repeat over and over again to get as many Torg tokens as you want. If you didn't know, Torg tokens are another currency in the game, kind of like Iridium. You can spend them on a vending machine in the Torg's Campaign of Carnage on many different legendary Torgs. And because of this method inside of Pete's Bar, they are easily obtainable. That includes your double penetrating unkempt heralds, your perfect flackers, and your OP Kerblasters for Axton. As well as any other non-uniques you may want like a Ravenger, 3-Way Hulk, or a nice Spitter. Can't forget you can also find the unique Pocket Rocket inside of these machines, but I should also say these machines go for a lot of the areas, almost every single one in the DLC. I'm just trying to explain why the Torque Token farm is important and why you may want to farm this area. Not only do you get a bunch of Torque Tokens from turning in this mission, I believe it's 25 every single time you turn it in, which you'll be able to complete this mission in about a minute and a half. All while the enemies during this barroom brawl are spitting Torque tokens at you consistently and this isn't even to mention pyro pete is also in this same area another unique raid boss you will have to complete torg's campaign of carnage to fight the invincible version of pyro pete but at the end of the day he also spits out a lot of legendaries pearls he's got seraphs in his loot pool as well as seraph crystals i feel like pyro pete's drops used to be a lot better back in the day but nonetheless he's still a pretty fun farm overall he's a pretty easy raid boss to kill and i've really got nothing more to say coming in at our number three spot we have another area that is a part of our main game meaning that whether you are playing on the ps vita your pc your xbox you all have access to the dust this is an area you should run into about two and a half hours into your playtime on average and the first unique you have a chance of seeing isn't actually a legendary it is a gun known as the gwent's head you can find it in this little box located in ellie's garage now there are many different spots where this box can spawn at just know that if you walk into ellie's garage and it isn't in this box, I wouldn't really go hunting it down. If you want it, really just sit there and save and quit at Ellie's until the box spawns. It's a decent doll pistol and overall nothing to complain about. You also can't go wrong with tubbies. As I mentioned earlier when I was talking about Frostburn, they are basically a fat loot pinata. And the dust has always been my favorite spot to farm these guys. Running behind Ellie's and killing tubby spider ants, man. There's just nothing like it. I don't know what it is. I think I've seen about four in one run was the most I ever saw. Only once though. But like I said before, you can't expect to get these guys every run. You're going to go on some dry streaks. And then of course, like you see in my footage, you may just run into just one of them. But while you're watching me kill that tubby, I want to talk about a legendary that you can get in the dust. This legendary is known as the Hammer Buster, and you can get it after getting a mission known as the Bane. You'll have to get a little further into the main story for this one, but you'll find it right outside of Moxie's bar. This mission will allow you to kill the mini boss known as McNally. McNally has the designated drop, the Hammer Buster assigned to him. If you've heard me talk about this gun in the past, you know that it's not my favorite gun, but overall, it can do pretty damn good damage in the first two playthroughs. Just in UVHM, it is kinda trash. Still, it's another legendary, had to mention it. Right after you get to the story mission, the Bright Lights Flying City, you will be able to do a side mission known as the Good, the Bad, and the Mordecai. It's a super easy quest, you can complete it in about 5 minutes. There are two different mini bosses inside of this quest, one being Mobley, the other being Gettel. Mobley, which is the dude who can come right here out of the church, he has a chance to give you the Farouk, a legendary assault rifle manufactured by Dahl that is pretty damn decent all the way through the game. 
especially on Axton. And then Gettle has a chance to drop you just, you know, casually one of the best snipers in the game. Called like the Lyuda or something like that. I don't know, you guys may have heard of it. But seriously, if you didn't know, the Lyuda is an absolute beast of a legendary sniper in my opinion the best legendary sniper in the game by a landslide no other legendary sniper comes close to beating that thing and after you take those guys out i'm going to speed the clip up a little bit but if you head back here and hit that little respawn slash save point you will see that you have a chance to get another boss known as the black queen if you didn't know the black queen has a chance to drop the legendary rocket launcher known as the nukem but the thing about this is the black queen is not a guaranteed spawn so there will be many runs where you run back here to see if the Black Queen is spawned or not, and she will not be there. You will have to save and quit and try again. Still though, if you can get your hands on a Nukem, pretty decent rocket launcher. I definitely recommend it. Really good for getting second wins if you go down. Holds up for a majority of the game if you know what you're doing with it. I'd give the chest loot a solid 5 out of 10 at the dust. Honestly, if you guys want to skip the chest, even the caravan. I know a lot of people love the caravan. As in people who don't know how to play the game. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but if you're looting the caravan, just please stop. There are so many different better methods to get literally anything. Because those gray doll chests just simply do not drop legendaries. Because I'll be honest, back when I got the game in 2012, I didn't even have internet yet. I didn't get internet over here until 2013. Therefore, there was no way for me to look stuff up on the game. So I just played it myself on my Xbox 360, and I would sit there and farm the caravan for hours. So don't think I'm just shitting on you, I'm also shitting on myself. Now I want to hop into the last legendary that you can get from the dust. There is actually two if you wanted to count it, but after completion of the side quest line known as Clan Wars, you will have to choose to either kill Trevor Hodunk or Mick Zafford. Mick Zafford giving you a chance to drop the Jacob's Pistol known as the Maggie, and Trevor Hodunk giving you a chance at the legendary SMG known as the Slaga. This is always one of the hardest decisions when I'm doing a playthrough, man. I love both of these guns. Sometimes I'll even do this side quest line in true Vault Hunter mode and normal mode just to get these weapons and use them for a little bit. Both of them are just so much fun to use. They're both really decent weapons. Super easy farm. You're going to be able to get both of these within like 10 minutes of farming more than likely. I mean, if you sit here and hit the Lynchwood door and then just turn around and hit the dust, it should take you no more than about 30, 40 seconds per kill. Wow, man. Who thought a place called the dust could have so much good shit in it? Coming in at our number two spot, this one should come as no surprise to anybody it is the earliest area on the list that you could encounter it is three horns divide now if i'm being honest i was just going to make a joke about this area and sum it up in just three words then i realized there's actually a fourth factor that i wanted to mention while i'm pretty sure there are only two red chests inside of the three horns divide both of them are actually pretty good especially this one you will see me opening right now I've gotten many legendaries out of this chest, including a Slaga that I got during this video, which I think might be a perfect parted Slaga for a melee character. Like, I'm actually thinking of holding on to this for my Krieg. But yeah, Three Horns Divide chests are super underrated, and I can't recommend them enough. Oh, and you want to know those three words I was going to use to sum up the whole area? Unkempt Herald. Fastball. All right, and before we hop into our number one spot, I wanted to give you guys two areas that I think deserved an honorable mention. One of them is locked behind the Fight for Sanctuary DLC. It is actually the Doll Abandon. Not only do you have the loot nests that have really good chance of dropping legendaries and can give you all different types of legendaries, just like loot midgets, you got multiple chances at rainbow rarity items like the Nirvana, the Toothpick, and many more. You could also get some pretty decent chest loot as well as a guaranteed loot midget if you have not completed the side mission known as Space. Cowboy. If you would like to know how to do the easiest loot midget farm in the game, it has to do with this mission Space Cowboy. I will also link that in the description below. And the other area I would like to mention in this honorable mentions is the Wildlife Exploitation Preserve. Now this one has a lot of stuff that I have to mention, so I'm going to try and get through it as quickly as I can so we can hop into our number one spot. You got the tubbies like I mentioned before, just an absolute loot bonanza. You got the guaranteed loot midgets if you have not completed Tannis' side mission known as Doctor's Orders. You got Pomone and Toomba with their legendaries they can drop the Deliverance and the Transformer. Sure, neither of them are very great, but oh well. And then you also got Son of Mothrak who commonly drops the Skull Masher through the floor. The main reason I put this area on the list is just for the chance of tubbies. You got chance of a tubby rack here. You got chance of tubby skags as well as the tubby stalkers. And then just a lot of the other drops are kind of poop here other than the loot midgets and tubbies, which is kind of why it didn't make the list. But overall, a really good loot midget farm. One of the best in the game. Now coming in at our number one spot, 
we have a vocation that is a part of the Fight for Sanctuary DLC. It is the Withering Deep. If you did not know, this is an arena for a raid boss in the game known as Haterax. Now, I will say, if you do not know how to do the Haterax boss fight, this is easily not the best place for you to be farming. But after learning the mechanics of this fight, you will receive more legendaries and pearls than any other boss in the game. And I say that with 100% certainty. There is no boss that has chests that give you loot like the Haterax chests do. Just watch the footage of me opening these chests, man. And in terms of the fight, the best advice I can give you guys is to follow the steps that I will show on the screen right now of me running after starting the fight i use this geyser to get up into this spot where you will be a hundred percent safe for the fight after you're able to stun him go ahead and jump down and shoot into his critical hit spot after you learn this strategy it is actually a super easy boss and i'd recommend it to just about anybody everybody's going to struggle with learning a raid boss at first but seriously it's not that bad if i can figure it out so can you but before I talk about his chest a little more, I also need to mention that he himself has a chance to drop legendaries and pearls as well. Always be checking the floor and rock loot during this fight. You also have a chance to get effervescence out of this chest with a guaranteed chance to get the easy mode shield and bonus chance to get other rainbow rarity items. There wasn't a single run that I did in today's video, and trust me, I did plenty, where I didn't get a legendary. There wasn't a single one, dude. Not a single run of Haterax did I I go and not get something and for that reason he lands right here at our number one spot of the top five areas to farm there was even a run where i got so many legendaries that i may keep that clip on my computer forever i'll show that run on screen now but regardless i really hope you all did enjoy today's video what top fives do you guys want to see next what are you guys interested in seeing do you want to see more worst to best top fives what do you want whatever you all want i will do my best to bring it to you i'd love you all to death like you are my family Please smash a like on it for all the time it took me to make this video. I've been working on this for about a week and a half now, and I'm really excited to get it out to you guys. And if you haven't seen, I'm back full force in the swing of things for about a month now. Go check out the latest videos on the channel if you have not. Please smash the subscribe button if you guys are new. Tap the bell. Comment down below what you guys thought of today's video and what you guys want to see in the future. And with that, I will see you all in the next one.